Okay, guys. I hope uh, Section E students have also joined the class. So, uh, guys, we will continue from the where we have left. Uh, there is only one derivation. There is only one derivation which was left that is related to dilation and the bulk modulus. Either the dilation and the bulk modulus, other two equations that is normalized. Uh, what you say, generalized Hooke's law equation for normal stresses and strains and for shear stresses and shear strains we have derived in the morning. And then we have derived the relationship involving modulus of elasticity, modulus of rigidity and Poisson's ratio. And the last equation which we need to derive is dilation and the bulk modulus. So uh, it will not take long. So I would like to quickly go through it so that because uh, you guys had earlier classes as well. So you guys might uh, need a break as well. So I will quickly uh, go through it. So can you see this uh, figure? Dilation and bulk modulus. Can you see this? Amar Nazar Arata. Mark, can you hear me? Actually, sir, I have an internet issue. I have a screen issue. Okay, sir. Can you hear me? Okay, G. dilation and the bulk modulus. I have re, uh, re shared the slide. So let me see. So uh, when an elastic material is subjected to normal stress, its volume will change. So this is your normal element. This is your element subjected to the normal stress. So its actual dimensions dy, dx, and dz. Okay, D, Z. Now it is subjected to the normal stress sigma Z, sigma X, sigma Y, and correspondingly there are elongations about X, Y, and Z direction. And you can see these are positive stresses, so resulting into positive strains. One plus epsilon Y, one plus epsilon X, one plus epsilon Z. So there is positive uh, strains resulting in the elongation of the element. So when an elastic material is subjected to normal stress, its volume will change. For example, consider a volume element which is subjected to the principal stresses sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. If the sides, see, sorry. If the sides of the element are originally dx, dy, and dz, okay, so this is shown in figure 21A. So this is that figure. Then after the application of the stress, TKG, after the application of the tensile normal stresses, sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z, the sides become 1 plus epsilon x dx, 1 plus epsilon y dy, 1 plus epsilon z dz. TKG is shown in figure 21B. Now the change in volume will be Change in volume is new volume minus the original volume. Now, new volume is new dimensions are 1 plus epsilon x dx, 1 plus epsilon y dy, 1 plus epsilon z dc. And the actual volume is dx times dy times dz. Now, after simplifying this, change in the volume, delta v or sigma v, Okay, delta V is preferable, change in the volume. Now you can see, uh, you will multiply these expressions okay, after simplification. Now, because the strains epsilon X, epsilon Y, and epsilon Z, these are the strains which are in 10 raised to minus 6. So when uh, you will find the product of these strains, let's say epsilon X times epsilon Y, that product will be equal to 10 raised to minus 12. So those values will be very small. So neglecting the products of the these strains, since the strains are very small, 10 raised to minus 12, we have change in the volume, epsilon x plus epsilon y 
plus epsilon z times dx dy a d z everyone agrees up to this point everyone agrees up to this point that the change in the volume theek hai ji by neglecting this products of the strains like x y epsilon x epsilon y epsilon y epsilon x theek hai ji epsilon y epsilon z these products have been ignored and after simplification you get change in the volume as delta v is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z times dx dy dz agree to this point unit volume the change in volume that is delta v per unit volume that is this dv or the volume actual volume the change in volume per unit volume is called the volumetric strain theek hai ji the change in volume per unit volume is called the volumetric strain or the dilation and dilation is represented by the sign e theek hai ji and that is delta v that is change in volume over the original volume so change in volume was epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z times dx dy and dz and the change and the actual volume is dx dy and dz so this will cancel out so your change in volume per unit volume that is uh, uh, volume metric strain or the dilation that will be equal to uh, epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z guys do you agree up to this point guys do you agree by up to this point no one is responding amar can you hear me yes sir okay thoda sa respond kar de kare tak patta rahe ki ho raha hai cheez no change in volume per unit volume that is volumetric strain or the dilation is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z so by comparison the shear strains will not change the volume of the element rather they will only change its rectangular shape okay so your shear strains they will not change the volume they will rather just change its rectangular shape now uh, use hooke's law theek hai ji hooke's law is uh, let me show you from here now yahan pe usne ek step miss kiya hua so this is your volumetric strain or change in volume per unit volume by comparison the shear strains will not change the volume rather will only change its rectangular shape so also if we apply the hooke's law as defined earlier hooke's law is epsilon x is equal to 1 over e times sigma x minus mu times sigma y plus sigma z and your epsilon y will become ye wale expressions aapne use karne hai this one epsilon x is equal to a uh, 1 over e times sigma x minus mu times sigma y plus sigma z epsilon y is equal to 1 over e times sigma y uh minus mu times sigma y is equal to 1 over e times sigma z minus mu times sigma x plus sigma y now these three expressions these three equation uh, expressions which are generalized these three these three equations these three equations you will put in this equation volumetric strain equation theek hai ji epsilon x epsilon y z will be placed with generalized hooke's law equation so also if we apply the hooke's law as defined earlier the dilation can be rewritten in the terms of the applied stress and after simplification 
we get the equation as a uh, volumetric strain is equal to 1 minus 2 times mu over a uh, modulus of elasticity times sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. Okay, uh, and this is given as equation number A. Okay, so in the volumetric strain equation, which is epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z, we are putting the actual values of generalized Hooke's law equation. Okay, as a replay as a, by substituting epsilon x, substituting epsilon y, substituting epsilon z. So we get over volumetric strain equation as one minus two times mu over e into sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. And this equation has been numbered as equation A. Any questions about this? If you have any query, please ask me now. If not, then we will continue. When a volume element of material is subjected to a uniform pressure of liquid, TKGP. So now what they are saying that you have a volume element, okay, which is subjected to uniform pressure, and uh, means pressure in all the directions is same, which is represented by P. The pressure on the body is same in all the directions and normal to any surface in which it acts. Shear stresses are not present since the shear resistance of the liquid is zero. That's please note down this point. Shear stresses, now you have an element which is subjected to uniform pressure of liquid P. The pressure on the body is same in all the directions and is perpendicular to the surface on which it acts. Shear stresses are not present since the shear resistance of the liquid is zero. Since the shear resistance of the liquid is zero. Please note down this. The state of the hydro, hydrostatic stresses requires, the state, let me show you from here. So when a volume element of material is subjected to the uniform pressure P of a liquid, the pressure Pressure on the body is the same in all directions and is always normal to any surface on which it takes. Shear stresses are not present since the shear resistance of a liquid is zero. This state of hydrostatic loading requires the normal stresses to be equal in all the directions and therefore an element of the body is subjected to principal stresses. Sigma x is equal to sigma y, which is equal to sigma z. And this is because, uh, and all these stresses are equal to the uniform pressure of the liquid. Now, uniform pressure of the liquid means that it is compressive in nature. These stresses, you can see, they are trying to confine the element. So these stresses are negative in direction. Inwards, inwards, inwards. Why you have sigma x is equal to minus p, sigma y is equal to minus p, sigma z is equal to minus p. Now, what you have to do, you will substitute uh, this equation, which is your, uh, which I have numbered as equation b into equation a. This is equation b, and you have have minus p, sigma y minus p, sigma z minus p in this in this equation A volumetric strain. One minus two times mu over E is into sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. So once you will put minus p, minus p, minus p, that will be minus 3p. Now after simplification, I will get P over E, P over E is equal to E. This small e is the volumetric strain, and this E, capital E, is the modulus of elasticity. 
over three times one minus two times one minus two times mu. Since this ratio p p is the hydrostatic pressure, which is negative, ठीक है जी, and this e is the volumetric strain. This ratio of p over e is similar to the ratio of linear elastic stress to the strain sigma over epsilon, which is basically your Hooke's law. Now this equation. This P over E is basically your bulk modulus, which is the ratio of this hydrostatic stress to the uh, volumetric strain. So this is your bulk modulus K. ठीक है जी, and this is equal to E over three times one minus two times Poisson ratio. ठीक है जी. Since uh, this ratio is P over E, which is uh, hydrostatic pressure to the volumetric strain, is similar to the ratio of linear elastic stress to the strain, which defines E sigma over strain. The term on the right is equal to the volume modulus of elasticity or the bulk modulus of uh, elasticity. It has the same units as stress. Because uh, it's the ratio of stress over strain, and we know that the strain has no units. So whatever are the units of the stress, the same will be the units of the modulus. So uh, it is symbolized by the letter K. See, that K is equal to E over three times one minus two times mu. For most matters, Poisson ratio is one over three, like. Like steel has 0.3, so this bulk modulus is approximately equal to elastic. If a material existed that did not change its volume, okay, then change in volume that is uh, equal to zero, and K would have to be in Fahrenheit. Okay, so you just need to keep this thing in mind at present. Uh, that K ठीक है जी दिस बल्क मॉड्यूलस इट्स यूनिट्स आर सेम एज द लास्ट मॉड्यूलस ऑफ दिस एंड इट्स वैल्यू इज एप्रोक्सीमेटली इक्वल टू सेम दिस इज अनदर स्टोरी बेसिकली दिस पोजंस रेशियो दैट हाउ इट वेरीज बिकॉज़ दिस इज रिलेटेड टू द डायलेशन आई थिंक व्हेन यू गाइस विल कम हियर डू लेट मी नो I have worked on this during my PhD, and I can, uh, with the uh, what you say from the experiment, I can show you what it is. Basically, uh, as you are testing the cylinders, because if I confine these cylinders with anything like FRP sheet, so when you will apply the load, there will be axial stresses, axial strains. So due to Poisson's effect, there will be lateral strains. So lateral strains will continue to increase with the dilation, and they will. Uh, what you say put pressure this will put pressure on the frp no frp what will but it will do different third law we say that to every action there is equal and opposite reaction so whatever the concrete put stress on frp frp will in return will put the same pressure theek hai so now your concrete will have some confinement so what will happen Uh, uh it will take more load okay ji so it's a very interesting phenomena uh, when you guys will come to the campus do remind me this i will explain you this phenomena in further detail okay ji so uh that's all for today if you have any questions uh you can ask me what i will do uh i will further simplify this uh, dilution when i will share with you ठीक है जी नाउ फ्रॉम द नेक्स्ट वीक फॉर नेक्स्ट टू वीक्स डॉक्टर नुमान विल टेक योर क्लासेस एंड इन द लास्ट वीक आई विल टेक योर क्लास एंड वी विल स्टडी द थीरीज ऑफ फेलियर एनी क्वेश्चंस गाइस इफ यू हैव यू कैन आस्क मी If no questions, then thank you very much for your time and your say support. Uh, 
uh, studied extra hours so that we can cover the syllabus.